This may seem like a bit of a peculiar topic for a video, but if you are of a particular vintage, you no doubt will harbour nostalgic feelings for specific graphics cards that really accelerated the 3D era for you. For me, it was a 32 megabyte creative DNT2 Ultra, which I spent 200 odd quid on around 1999, that absolutely turbocharged my computer and totally blew my teenage self away. All that graphics horsepower was channeled through the dedicated AGP slot on my motherboard to produce sizzling images on my glowing CRT. Now, whether your card of choice was made by S3, Matrox, 3DFX or Nvidia, you would have wanted the AGP version to ring out the most performance. So let's look into this dedicated graphics bus a little more, its origins, some of the classic cards and why it was eventually phased out and discontinued by the time the late 2000s were up. Let's start off by revisiting the mid 90s, back to a simpler time before CUDA cores and teraflops were even a thing. Back then most PC developers were extracting graphics performance from ISA and VLB video cards in their 486s and early Pentiums. The CPU was taking the majority of the pressure of software rendering, but by 1996 many games were crippling home computers and processors and graphics cards were struggling to produce good frame rates. Grand Prix 2 for example brought systems to their knees as anyone who tried to run it in SVGA mode can attest to. Likewise Quake in software mode could just about be run on a 486DX4100 at around 8 or 10 frames per second and you really wanted a decent Pentium to get smooth gameplay. Then 3DFX launched its first Voodoo chipset which ushered in the true first phase of the 3D era in November 1996. These changed the face of PC gaming forever and at the time provided stunning performance, transforming many people's computers into console killers with a Glide API. Even so, the Voodoo 1 and later the Voodoo 2 were designed to use the peripheral component interconnect slot, the PCI slot. It's a bus type that had been around since 1992, but by 1996 had totally supplanted ISA slots altogether, but it was hitting its limits. You see, the big downside to PCI when talking about graphics was that this bus had bandwidth limitations, which would become problematic very quickly due to the exponential pace of improvements for both graphics card architecture and 3D rendered graphics. The first AGP slots arrived on x86 compatible system boards based on socket 7 Intel P5 Pentiums and slot 1 P6 Pentium 2 processors. Intel introduced AGP support with the i440LX slot 1 chipset on August the 26th, 1997. Early video chipsets featuring AGP support included the Rendition Verity V2200, the 3DFX Voodoo Banshee, the Nvidia Reva 128, 3D Labs Permidia 2, the Intel i740, the ATI Rage series, the Matrox Millennium 2 and the S3 Verge GX-2. Whilst Microsoft first introduced AGP support into Windows 95 with the OEM Service Release 2, it also came into Windows NT4 with Service Pack 3 introduced in 1997. As the AGP bus matured, increasing slot speeds became available and they were defined by different voltage signaling. AGP V1 1.0 specifies 3.3 volt signals and allowed for AGP 1 and 2 times speeds. AGP 2.0 allowed 4 times speeds with signaling at 1.5 volts. Finally, AGP 3.0 specifications allowed 8 times speeds with a 0.8 volt signal. As later cards were manufactured, they were made such that they couldn't be installed into older AGP slots, though there was still a good amount of backwards compatibility with a lot of cards. There are also a bunch of PCI based AGP ports, but let's keep that for another video. Eventually though, as with the PCI bus, graphics technologies evolved to the extent that even the dedicated AGP port was now becoming a serious bottleneck. From around 2004, it was being phased out and by 2010, most motherboards and graphics card manufacturers were moving to the PCI Express standard. PCIe supported a much higher data transfer rate and remains the current standard for modern graphics cards and other devices on the motherboard. 
The last AGP cards from Nvidia were the GeForce 7 series, being released in 2009, whilst AMD's final cards were around the Radeon HD3850 and the HD4670 released in 2011. These were DirectX 10 compatible and were still pretty powerful back in the day if your motherboard supported them. For me, I had moved away from AGP when I bought a Vista desktop in September 2009, which came with a 9800 Plus GTX, which I still have in my collection. In my newest desktop, I run a 2060 Super with 8 gigabytes of RAM. I truly love how technology has moved on over the last two decades. 20 years ago, my TNT2 had 32 megabytes of memory, and now I have 8 gigabytes. I wonder what I will have in another 20 years. As always, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any comments, please put them in below. I do read all of them and I'll try and get back to you. Thanks a lot and see you in the next one.